So today we're looking at the long brief for basic instrument flight for the Piper Cherokee PA28. So I'll just skip over housekeeping as it is an online brief. So aim. To learn how to fly the aeroplane accurately by use of flight instruments without external visual references. So normally when we fly, we fly by looking outside and judging the attitude of the aeroplane with respect to the horizon, but now we'll fly using our instruments only. Um, and what we like to say is we like to call it flying under the hood. So motivation, a VFR should ideally never include flight into IMC. However, if it does, um, we can use the aeroplane's instruments to safely navigate and exit IMC in the event of an inadvertent entry. So IMC stands for Instrument Meteorological Conditions. Um, so con weather conditions where you can only fly using your instruments. These skills will eventually form the basis for future training towards an instrument range. So um, if you do inadvertently fly into an IMC, the first priority is to safely exit and get out into VMC conditions. Um, and this lesson also aims to warn you from going into clouds and to teach you how difficult instrument flying can initially, initially be without proper training. Um, and this BIF lesson will give you a basic understanding of what you do if you do choose um, to do the instrument training course. An overview of what we'll have a look at, so objectives, that's the take home message. We'll have a look at revision from our straight level brief. Uh, we'll look at the definitions that are relevant today. We'll look at the primary flight instruments, so uh, pilot six pack. And then we'll have a look at operating systems, so our PETA, static, and our gyroscopic instruments. Um, we will also look at the sensor illusions, so we've looked at instrument errors. We'll also look at human errors. We'll look at application. So scanning selections and methods and unusual attitude recovery. Amateur and threat and remote considerations, um, especially you know, doing a lesson such as basic instrument flight. Uh, there's a few things we need to think about so that we're careful in the training area. I'll summarize everything and then finally I'll ask you some questions with the objectives. So far in this briefing we'll be aiming to from memory. Name two instruments which operate via driving scopes and two instruments which operate on a PETA system. So it's important because um, you know, we want to know as pilots, we want a little, little bit of theory about how our, our instruments operate. Explain the basic instrument scan to be used to maintain straight level flight. You know, straight level is such an important maneuver, um, and you know we want to know what uh, instruments we want to look at if they're flying that straight level maneuver. Name and explain a one sensory illusion. Pilot may experience when flying with no external visual reference. So knowing about the, the sensory illusions and how they occur, we can learn how. Um, to overcome it. Um, and say the prime instrument, check if there's an unusual attitude, um, you know, as you're in an undesired aircraft state and you want to quickly be able to recover. In this lesson, we've got the threat of motion sickness. The error will be long period, periods of eye instrument flight, and the anxiety across state will be part of incapacitation. So make sure you take, take breaks as required. A lot of students do still feel sick in this lesson, so it's important to let the instructor know that if you're feeling unwell. So what is the pilot slip form? So if you want, you can pause the video, uh, but I'll be giving the answers out now. So the pilot slip formula is power plus attitude equals performance. And it's relevant for this lesson because once again, you know, we're going to set the power, we're going to set the attitude, and that will give us the desired performance. What is the procedure used to enter, maintain, and exit from a client? So you enter using um, pre-entry checks, um, and then doing pass. Maintenance is done using AMA, and exit is done using ARS. So it's the same exact procedures, so we're under the hood, the reason that's why it's relevant, except you know, our maintenance cycle is a little bit differently, we're using our scan to maintain the client. What instruments do we check during our taxi checks and what do we specifically look for? So we're checking, you know, for our turn slip coordinator, um, if you're turning towards the left, numbers are decreasing, the turn slip coordinator out towards the right, turning towards the right, um, numbers are increasing, skid ball out towards the left. And you're checking your artificial horizon is level, and doesn't move left and right, and you've got the Q, correct QNH sets. So this is important. You know, we want all of our instruments to work, um, you know, since we're doing instrument flying. So gyroscope. A spinning wheel mounted on gimbals so that its axis is unrestrained in one or more planes of motion. So no matter how the gyroscope moves, um, the wheel in the middle will always be in that same plane of motion. So in terms of primary instruments, uh, so I'd like you to identify the six-pack, so you can pause the video. So first off, we'll start off with the top uh, left. So we've got the airspeed indicator, the artificial horizon, and then the uh, altimeter. And then we've got the turn slip coordinator, uh, the directional indicator, 
uh, or the, also called the heading indicator, and the vertical speed indicator as well. So, you know, designers of the six pack have even shown how important it is the artificial horizon by placing it in the middle. It is extremely important, especially with your left wing. Just like the attitude is important in, v, in visual flight rules flying, so is the ad, artificial horizon in instrument flying. So in terms of our pressure instruments, so we've got our three pressure instruments, um, the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and VSI. They work the vertical speed indicator, and they work by measuring the static pressure of the air. Only the airspeed indicator works by relying on the total pressure from the pitot tube. And then we've got our three gyroscopic instruments. So we looked at these the term in our definitions. So these instruments are gyroscopic instruments, and they each have a gyroscope behind them. Um, that helps to work. Um, and the artificial horizon and the directional indicator work on a gyroscope that is spun using the engine um, and or the engine driven vacuum and the turn coordinator is driven by a gyro that is spun electrically so it gives us a backup source of power in case the engine driven failed. So our control instruments, so we've got the artificial horizon um, and the power, uh, so the power of this attitude gives us these performance so that's why there are control instruments um, and then these are performance instruments. So these instruments all measure the aeroplane's performance, um, and you know we use powerful attitude to get that desired performance. So don't use the numbers as a primary instrument, as you know you'll only be chasing numbers and you'll never get a sort of fixed power. So you set the power and set the attitude, and you'll get the desired performance. And for strain level, you know you would want to check primarily the artificial horizon and your directional indicator as well and even your height as well that you're maintaining um, height <clears throat> so in terms of our operating system so we'll look at it a little bit more in depth so the pitot slash static systems so we'll check the operation and errors and the gyroscopic instruments we'll look at operation and limitations so first off with the pressure instruments so the airspeed indicator so uh, it uses static and total pressure to calculate the dynamic pressure so this is what the pitot tube looks like and the static pressure is measured by the ports where it is not disturbed by the dynamic flow. Um, and the total pressure is measured using the pitot tube. Uh, so static is down below here, and the dynamic pressure is measured here at the front. Um, and it is possible for both of these ports to be blocked, which can give unreliable indications, or it can also mean that the, um, the, the ASI airspeed indicator is stuck as well. And so, this instrument is so important, if it doesn't work, we'll abort the tape off. So airspeed indicator, so pressure in the capsule expands from the total pressure and the airspeed indicator measures the difference between these two pressures. Um, and through linkages and components, um, they allow us to measure the um, and read, allow us to give the reading on the airspeed indicator. So remember total pressure equals static pressure plus dynamic pressure. Remember we looked at this in terms of the Bernoulli's theory. So dynamic pressure equals total pressure minus static pressure. Um, and errors and occurs from the intercomponents of the cells. So good design can keep it to a minimum. So the altimeter. So the altimeter measures the height above a datum Q and H by taking into account the static pressure of the air. Um, and the ex capsule expands as the static pressure drops. As we climb, the capsule expands and the linkages are able to measure it on the altimeter. And when the, you descend, the air comes back in uh, and the capsule contracts as well. Um, uh, to make room for the air. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're descending, you're descending through denser air, so the air comes in and makes it contract. Um, and, you know, we adjust the Q&H using the subscale on the altimeter, so due to the high and low different pressure systems as well. So limitations assumes the change in height. Pressure is due to the, height, the change in height, which is not always true due to high and low pressure systems. So that's why that knob allows us to change the date, which is a Q and H. And then finally, the vertical speed indicator. So since the capsule expands and contracts with height, the vertical speed indicator measures the rate at which it expands. So remember, rate is to do a unit of time, so that we're looking at feet per minute. So there's a choke over here, which measures whether or not the air is going in or out, and how much of it is going in and out. So it is connected through the linkages to the VSI, which gives us our reading. And there's a limitation, there's a lag and limit of only 2,000 feet. So it's, the 2,000 feet is not a design limit on the aeroplane, 
it's only the max reading of the instrument. The aeroplane can descend and climb at a feet of greater than 2,000 feet, but it wouldn't be safe for the pilot. So as you can see, so if you're descending, air is going in. So it tells us, you know, that rate of how much air is going in. And if you're climbing, that air is going out. So it'll show um, how much of that air is going out using that vertical speed indicator. So this is a summary, a good diagram to show the three instruments together. So the airspeed indicator relies on both the pitot tube and the static source, um, and the VSI and the altimeter only rely on the static source. Um, so if there was a if the static port was blocked, we have an alternate source in the cockpit which we can use to activate, and all th we can use that to give us uh, all three instruments so that they can read, and there'll be a bit of a margin of error. Um, so, can you, so in terms of the alternate static, um, if you've got the control column here, the alternate static is just below, it's a knob and it's always facing towards the right, um, and it provides air from inside the channel. So in terms of summary, so the effects of blockages, so if the air should, in, in terms of the air, ASI, the static is, the source is static, it's dynamic, and there is a lag, and the static, if the static is blocked, the instrument underreads and apply, and a pedo is blocked, the instrument overreads and apply. Um, altimeter, static source, there is a lag, if it's blocked it will only read the last altitude and the pedo block, it doesn't run on pedo, so there's no uh, VSI, so if um, the if it's run on the static source, lag and yes and fluctuates in turbulence, so even though you may be maintaining height, it will be fluctuate, if the static is blocked it will read zero and pedo, it doesn't run on pedo. So a good way to remember it is PUD suck, so if the pedo is blocked, in the, for the ASI, the Peter underreads descent, but if the static is blocked, the ASI static underreads climb. Um, but if the static was blocked for the ultimate and VSI, remember they read the last altitude or read zero. You can also think of it as soft POC. Static overreads descent, Peter overreads climb. So now we'll have a look at our three gyroscopic instruments. And remember they were the, our artificial horizon, our DI, and our turn instant coordinator. Um, we'll look at their operations and limitations. And remember, any mass that is um, rotating has gyroscope properties, and the heavier the mass, um, and or the faster it spins, the greater its property, the it's greater its gyroscopic um, properties. And they rely; these two instruments rely on rigidity in space and precession. So, gyroscope rigidity, a type of inertia where the object rotating object seeks to maintain its alignment to a fixed point in space, and it is mounted on gimbals. So, rigidity. No matter, no matter how much the gimbal moves, um, the wheel is always moving in one um, plane of motion. Um, and it allows the gyroscope to remain unrestrained, and our artificial horizon and our directional indicator rely on this, on gyroscope rigidity. So, so gyroscopic precession, it also has a tendency to resist a force uh, applied at one point, which causes a 90 degree displacement in the direction of motion. So after a roll, this causes a gyro to yaw after being displaced. So, you know, let's say you're holding the gyro here at two ends, and uh, when attempting to um, yaw it, so yaw it left or right, it, it wants to instead to roll. It's also kind of like, you know, spinning a bicycle. If you want to, it'll, if you uh, yaw it, it'll actually roll instead. So our turn coordinator relies on this movement. So sources of, fac of power, so it's suction slash vacuum is the flight energy indicator, directional indicator, electrical is our turn coordinator, and as this is due to a backup as well, and you can hear the turn coordinator spinning when you turn the battery on during the pre-flight, so that's all the sound. So we've got our vacuum air filter here, that's part powering the heading indicator, um, and you want nice clean air, so that's why it's filtered, as the um, gyro spins quite fast. Um, and you don't want anything, any particles or debris to affect the spinning. Um, and you can also monitor it using a suction gauge, uh, run through the artificial attitude indicator, and then our vacuum pump um, helps to keep that air spinning as well. Sorry, the gyro spinning. So artificial horizon, also called the flight attitude indicator, so it uses rigidity to work um, and it indicates movement around the lateral axis pitch and longitudinal axis roll. So it's quite handy as well. It's pretty much the uh, it's an artificial horizon 
shows us where the horizon is um, with respect to the arrow plane. Um, and you know, it tells us that 10, 20, and 30 degree bank, and four and 60 degrees and 90 degrees, and that 10, 20 in terms of the picture is all that's marked over there. Um, and it is relative to the true horizon, and so is the most important instrument when flying under the hood. Um, so limitations are pitch 60 degrees and angle bank limit is 110 degrees. Uses the knob to adjust the art for true horizon if it topples. So to so if we're using this knob, we can put it back into its place. Um, but we won't be reaching these limits, but it's just to let you know in terms of the theory. It takes 10 minutes to work for the, the, the gyroscope to spin. And does this instrument show you off? No, it only shows raw and pitch. And the only instrument that shows your is the tone coordinator. So a directional indicator indicates movement around the normal axis and um, the direction of the aeroplane. So um, yeah, that normal axis, that yaw, um, and uses gyroscopic rigidity to work. So same as the artificial horizon. Some limitations are it has to be aligned by a compass as it doesn't know where north is, and the angle of bank limit is 55 degrees. Um, and the DR must be aligned every 15 minutes because of the Earth's rotation. Um, and also friction and imbalances in terms of the gyroscope itself can cause it. So you must align it regularly as well. Uh, turn coordinator, so it indicates movement about the Longitudinal axis, so all turns under the hood are done as rate one turns, and it's also marked as well. Um, and the rate one turn, it's marked over here by this line, so that's a rate of three degrees per second, and it uses the principle of precession to work. So after a yaw, it will indicate a roll, which is why during our taxi checks we can see yeah, when you yaw the airplane, it shows us a roll. Um, and unlike the artificial horizon and DI, this instrument does not topple. And the only instrument that will show your with the balance ball as well. So in terms of the gyroscopic instrument errors, so our instrument artificial horizon, um, it's got a suction. Our gyroscopic principle is um, rigidity, pitch limit 60 degrees, angle bank 110 degrees, and the time it takes to work is 10 minutes. Directional indicator is a suction. Gyroscopic principle of rigidity, pitch limit, doesn't have a pitch limit, only in case direction, and angle bank limit is at 55 degrees, um, and you must align it every 10 to 15 minutes. Then you've got turn coordinate, source is electrical, um, it relies on precession, and it does not topple as well. So this is a good summary of three instruments, and we won't need to worry about you know, the pitch and angle bank limits, since we won't be going in anywhere near those limits in flight. So the magnetic compass, so it's mandatory equipment for VFR flight. So that's what you know we all we must have it. Reliable and self-contained and external power is not required. However, there are some acceleration and deceleration errors as well. And it's under Civil Aviation Order 20.18. You must know this. You must um, have this and the other instruments are um, a clock, compass, um, a airspeed indicator and an altimeter for VFR flight. And it's quite beneficial because unlike the, um, you know, the DI, it requires suction. This doesn't need any power, um, but since it has some errors, we also use a DI um, because it has some errors during acceleration, deceleration, and turning. So sensors used to maintain balance. Eyes, this is the most important balance mechanism and has the final say. In the semicircular and vestibular canals, they sense pitch, roll, and your. They've got little hairs. Um, and they've got also got a fluid, and as the, your um, head moves around, it's able to detect the movement um, using the small hairs, and it's able to convert it into an electrical signal and send it to the brain. It's kind of like a glass of water. The water is the fluid, and the hairs would represent the actual glass. Um, and the um, postural, the muscular and tissue, so they sense pressure when you lean or move forward or lean backwards. So... so all three sensors work in unison and, and provide information to the brain. So you must trust the instruments and not what you feel. Um, it is difficult initially to practice, but um, with enough training, your brain will accept the instruments.
So types of sensory illusions, so somatographic illusion, when the aeroplane accelerates. This feels as if the nose is pitching up and down, and the pilot responds by pitching the nose down. Dangerous, especially on takeoff. Uh, deceleration feels as if the nose is pitching down, and the pilot responds by pitching the nose up. Um, and it's caused and it's caused by the hairs moving back due to that inertia. And can you think of a flight period where acceleration occurs? So this usually occurs um, in high-powered airplanes, especially with takeoffs at night. And it's why we must rely on our artificial horizon. <coughs> Pardon me. Coriolis illusion occurs in the inner ear when the fluid inside the vestibular canals move around differently due to the perceived motion. So it occurs when picking up a pen or looking quickly to a passenger on the right. This can cause the fluid to move and causes a dumbling sensation. So I briefly mentioned this in steep tones. So to avoid this, you must move your eyes and not your head. And if you do have to move your head, move it smoothly to allow the fluid to settle. <coughs> and then the leans caused by banking too slowly, e.g. to the left, which settles the fluid in the hairs. And that means an abrupt change to the wings level attitude feels like a turn towards the right. Um, and even though you have a wings level attitude, you're maintaining straight direction, feels like you've turned to right. So you must trust your instruments. Um, it also happens if you control the aeroplane using performance instruments and not the horizon. Um, and false horizon, caused by the base of a cloud sloping towards the horizon or having a lighter colour. This gives the impression that the cloud base is the new horizon. So this sort of slanted horizon, you'd think of that as the new horizon. In this lesson, we've got the threat of illusions, the error with relying on physical cues, and the undesired aircraft state will be lost of control, so make sure you trust the instruments. So finally, fly instruments, so we've got six pack. So now we're moving on to the sort of application part. So primary T-scan for strain level flight, and do not fixate on one of these instruments. So you must keep scanning. And your tertiary instruments you're checking are your RPM and T's and P's. So you're sort of going for artificial horizon, your DI, and then back to the artificial horizon. Artificial horizon, ASI, back to the artificial horizon. Artificial horizon, back into the altimeter, and back into the artificial horizon. And your correction is done using that C check as well. Um, and it's really important to not fix it, as a lot of students do tend to do that. And adjust the attitude um, if it is incorrect. Um, your secondary V scan, so used to concern performance, <coughs> pass them, pardon me, and um, tertiary instruments, so are RPM and T's and P's. Um, and your correction is done using your C check. So these are the instruments you would use, you know, in a turn or in a descent. And it would also be used if there's an issue with the pressure instruments or the gyroscopic instruments. All right, six pack. The radial circular scan. You're scanning all six instruments in a circular manner. And your tertiary tertiary ones are RPM and TCPs. And once again, we've still got that same C check cycle. And this is the type of scan that is used in a turn. So for strain level, remember you're doing that T-scan, so you're doing the pre-entry checks. Entry is done using past into the normal configuration, and your maintenance is a T-scan. Um, and you can't do ELA, but instead it is for the instructor to do, to check that it's all clear um, as well. And last one of the threats that exists, the threat of risk of collision, the heavy pool lookout, and the undesired aircraft have an air proximity event. So make sure you confirm with your instructor that the airspace is clear before doing manoeuvres. And your correction is remember that C-check, so... That's really important. Climbs and descents, so you're doing your pre-entry checks, so um, and then you're doing your entry using the pass acronym, so best rate of climb. Your maintenance is a circular scan, so you're taking all six instruments in a circular motion, and you're exiting back into the normal configuration using ASP. Your control is your artificial horizon, um, and your power setting, and your performance is your DI, ASI, and altimeter. And in your descent, it's a similar thing, you're doing your pre-entry checks, um, and entry is done using past. Maintenance is a radio scan. Exiting is done using a past. Control is your aid of horizon and your power, your tachometer, and your performance, your monitoring are your DI, ASI, and ultimate. So, for example, doing the cruise descent. So, well. so it's really important you control using your aid of horizon. Medium level turn, so you do your pre-entry checks, and your entry and exit is done using bank balance back pressure. Your maintenance is the circular scan and you exit using BBB and once you can instead of ALAP it's your A circular scan and all turns are done as rate one turn and um, performance instruments your control is done using AH and four instruments your, you should pay attention to our DI, TC and your altimeter and it's a rate one turn uh, and let's say you know, if there's any failures 
um, you can also do a rate one turn by doing, taking your indicated airspeed, dividing by 10 and adding 7. So if you've got an air, indicated airspeed of um, 100 knots, you would do 100 divided by 10, which is 10, plus 7, so your angle back should be about 17 degrees on the artificial horizon. And your correction is C chat as well. And um, it will take, so if it's 3 degrees per second, um, it will take 2 minutes to do 360 degrees as well. So climbing and descending turns, so it's similar to doing an actual climb and descent, except you're just using your instruments, so your pre-entry checks, and then you can do your enter, you're going to put yourself in the climb first, then using BBB, your maintenance is a circular scan. Remember, you tend to overbank in the climb, um, and during a descent, you'd underbank. Exit using ASP and BBB, and control is done using Artrizer, and performance your DI, ASI, and TC. And ultimately, your correction is C-chat. Um, descent, you're doing your pre-entry checks, your entries you're using past, um, and entry is done using past and backbones back pressure. Maintenance is your circular radial scan. Exit using A pass and BBB. Your control is your arch horizon and your performance instruments you're watching uh, for our DI, ASI, turn, sit, corner, and altimeter. And your correction, once again, is C chat. Remember, there's an underbanking scenario, um, and remember, all turns have to be done as rate one turns. Um, and you must ask the instructor to clear the airspace. Limited panel, so it can be due to a pressure blockage or due to a suction or electric fail. So, you know, three instruments that would fail in a static are your ASI, altimeter, and your VSI. Um, and other instruments can be used to supplement the maneuver if there is a failure. So, if the artificial horizon has toppled, you can use your DI and the altimeter. Uh, if the turn coordinator fails, you can use your artificial horizon to do a rate one turn. So yeah, the other instruments can be used to supplement the manoeuvre if there is a failure. So unusual attitude recovery, so conducted under the hood. So first off, you know, you, your instructor is untaking the control, they're doing some movements, and then they're going to hand over to you, and you're now going to say recover. So artificial horizon, check it, is it a high nose attitude or a low nose attitude? Confirm with the ASI and ultimate, airspeed increasing or decreasing, or climbing, are you climbing or descending? And then check your altitude as well. Um, and nose high, if your ASP is A less than 80 knots or decreasing, simultaneously apply full power and apply some forward pressure until the speed stabilizes. And level the wings using anons for straight level flight using smooth inputs, no abrupt inputs. Nose low, if it's greater than 120 knots or increasing. Um, and uh, idle power to stabilize our speed, prevent v &E and airframe damage. Level wings with anons and gently recover from the dive using back pressure, so smooth inputs. It's kind of like a spiral dive recovery as well and make sure you you know if you apply full and abrupt back pressure it can cause damage so caution that so summary pass for the desired performance um, and using the artificial horizon as much as possible just like we use our attitude in VFR flight it's a control instrument and we are only using our performance instruments to confirm um, use pass and ASP as appropriate Control it using C-chat with smooth movements, movements and always referring to the arch horizon for pitch and roll movements. Move your eyes and not your head, revert to the arch horizon at least every 3 seconds. To prevent the Coriolis illusion and anticipate headings and altitudes, especially with headings as we don't have a reference point. So use a heading bug or if it isn't available, just memorise the heading. So airmanship, do not enter IMC intentionally unless you are qualified to do so. If you note the heading and make it, if you do so, Note the heading and make 180 degree rate one turn to exit back into VMC. Um, and your first priority priority is to exit IMC safely. So look at one set of eyes, and so before each maneuver, ensure instructor checks airspace. Um, and instructor to look at, and if you don't hear clear left, clear center, clear right, ask the instructor, are we clear? Um, uh, air sickness discontinue. Um, exercise if feeling run well. Um, you know, instructor to look out as well, um, and due to the conflicting messages from your balance organs, or take the hood out as well if you're feeling unwell. Instrument serviceability, so make sure you do the checks on the ground, if they won't work on the ground, they won't work in the air. And monitor the suction and amount gauges periodically, um, as you know, if there's a dryer failure, you can know early on, instead of trusting the instruments and um, having your things go wrong using the correct headings as well. So in terms of threat and management, so we've, got, we've already looked at a, a bit of these, so it's not limited to these three threats. There's certainly a lot more that exists. So there's a threat and threat, error report, lookout, listening watch, uh, instructor to look out of traffic, 
and the undesigned new house that you weren't here for two minutes. So make sure you watch out for that threat of traffic and ask the instructor to clear. Motion sickness, long periods of art instrument flying, management take breaks if you're over and endless if you're unwell. And the undesigned aircraft state with pilot incapacitation, so that's really important um, that you um, take breaks as required and um, you know take the foot off. So the threat of illusions, the management with trust instruments in law, conflicting sensation, sensations and loss of control space with orientation. So there will be not trusting instruments and relying on those physical cues. So that's really important that you trust instruments. So in terms of summary, so objectives, that's the take-home message. Uh, we looked at a revision from our Australian level brief. Um, we looked at uh, definitions um, as well, such as gyroscope, rigidity, precession, the primary flight instruments, the six-pack, the operating system, the pedostatic gyroscopic instruments, their um, operations, the errors, the limitations. We looked at the sensory illusions as well, um, and some of those cues. Um, and make sure you trust those instruments. Application with the scanning selection methods and the unusual action economy. So make sure you read up that as well. Amateur and threat and management considerations, you know, watching out for traffic, um, you know, discontinuing the exercise, um, and you're trusting the instruments. And then finally, the objectives. So I can give you a moment um, if you want to pause the video, but I'll be answering the questions out now. So from memory, name two instruments which operate via gyroscopes and two instruments which operate on the pedostatic systems. So the three, uh, so yeah, you, the any gyro instruments are DI turn pull coordinator and your arbitrage, um, and your pedo static system instruments are ASI altimeter and your VSI. Explain the basic instrument scan to be used to maintain straight long flights. So that's that T scan, and you're referring to the arbitrage after doing each scan. Name and explain why the sensory illusion a plot pilot may experience when flying with those external visual reference. So you've got the um, the leans, you know, when you're turning slow towards the left and then an abrupt turn um, to wings level feels like a turn towards the right. And state the primary instrument to check if there's an unusual attitude, which is the art of trials. So thank you all so much for um, listening to this brief, and I'll see you in the next one.